Hi, this is Trevor from Annapolis Makerspace, and I wanted to share my family's recipe for stuffing, since it always seems to be a big hit at work, and of course with my family. I took my grandmother's recipe and refined it over a number of years to be as modular as possible. You start with a 20 ounce loaf of generic white bread, and everything else is proportioned to that. For my work's Thanksgiving potluck, I make five or six batches and end up with about eight pounds of stuffing. First, you want a large pan to saute the vegetables in, a large bowl to toss the ingredients together in, a large spoon or scoop of some kind for tossing, a roasting pan or casserole dish, a large measuring cup, a cutting board and a knife. For ingredients, you'll want one 20 ounce loaf of cheap white bread, one and a half sticks of salted butter, which is about three quarter cup, one half sweet or Vidalia onions, roughly one cup, one cup of celery, about three stalks, a half cup of parsley, one cup of chicken broth, two chicken bouillon cubes, one tablespoon of poultry or sage seasoning. I like Bell's, which is available in most of the grocery stores in my area. Sage is the key flavor I like in this recipe, so try to find some kind of sage seasoning, or just use poultry seasoning that has a good sage flavor. First, chop your onion and celery into chunks, not too small. Melt the butter in a pan on medium. Be sure not to set it too hot, or you'll burn your butter, and this isn't a brown butter recipe. Cook your celery and onion till tender. I use the spoon I'm going to end up tossing with, since you'll also be ladling juices with it. You can tell when the veggies are getting there, when you can cut the celery with the spoon, and the onions are turning translucent. Sweet onions are important because white or yellow onions end up coming out too strong, and overpower the stuffing with harsh onion flavor. Be sure to keep an eye on your onions and celery and stir them occasionally. While you're cooking your onions and celery, chop up your parsley, and then start chopping up your bread. I find cutting it with a knife easier than tearing it into chunks. I cut about four slices at a time, and I store the bread in the roasting pan for now. Dry bread cubes work even better. If you want to do this ahead of time, or put some in a pan in the oven on low for a while, some people call this stale, but really you just want to dry it out so it'll absorb the moisture better. Once the onion and the celery are tender, turn off the heat and add the chopped parsley, broth, sage seasoning, and mix it well. Take about a quarter of the bread cubes and put them in the bowl. And scoop about a quarter of the vegetable bits and toss them over the bread cubes. Then take about a quarter of the liquid and toss it over the bread as well. It's important to do this as evenly as possible because the bread will soak up the liquid. And if you end up with lots of liquid in one spot and not enough in others, then it just won't come out right. Take the spoon and gently toss the bread and wet mixture. You don't want to mix or stir or mash. You just want to lightly turn the mixture over in the bowl. I dig under and pull up. We want the bread to stay in cubes and not turn to mush. Repeat with about a third of the remaining bread and wet mixture. First with the solids and then some juice, then toss the bread again, then with about half of the remaining, and then the final quarter, which is 100% of the remaining. Just trust me on the math here. After you've tossed the bread and wet mixture, dump it into a roasting pan, cover with foil, then cook for about 30 minutes at 350 degrees. After 30 minutes, take the foil off and cook for another 10 or 15 minutes to get a nice crunchy crust on top. Eating it straight out of the oven is pretty tasty, but if you prepare it a day or two ahead of time and let it all mingle in the fridge, it'll be even better. You can reheat it in the oven on low, uncovered, or it even reheats okay in the microwave. My favorite though is to take a grapefruit sized ball and put it in the waffle iron and serve it with a fried egg on top. Let me know if you have any questions and let me know if you make this and how it worked out for you. Also be sure to check out Annapolis Makerspace at makeannapolis.org.